growth. Amen. Well, if you will, we're going to prepare our hearts to give to the Lord tonight, and I want to share some scriptures with you along the way. Uh, as you're preparing your hearts, keep in mind that you can text to give, you can use the envelope in front of you, you can uh, use PayPal, any, and you know, plain old cash actually works still. So yeah, there's many medium media by which you can give, amen? So let's turn to some familiar verses again, and we're going to start in Malachi, just as we did this morning. Um, because I, I want to use this sort of as a, the ground base, and there was some things with Pastor Michelle was speaking on this this morning that the, the Lord showed me I want to come back to. But just to refresh your memory, in Malachi 3, 10 and 11, and I've often said if your Bible doesn't open up automatically to Malachi 3, 10 and 11, then either it's a brand new Bible or it opens up to 2 Corinthians, one or the other, right? So this is one of the house scriptures. 10 says... Bring all the tithes, how much? All the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing, there will not be room enough to receive it. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake so that it will not destroy the fruit of your ground and the vines of your field will not fail to bear fruit, says the Lord of hosts. And I hadn't thought of this before, but just putting all that together, bring all the tithes into the storehouse and I'll rebuke the devourer. So don't bring the tithes into the storehouse and the devourer doesn't get rebuked. Amen? Amen. So may, be sure to make that connection. So what's he saying here is if we give in tithes and offerings, we're going to be blessed, right? Amen. I mean, there is a blessing coming our way. He, pro he provides abundantly, it says. Now, you can keep your, we're going to come back to that. You can keep your finger there. Uh, it'll be a while because I'm going to run around the Bible a little bit here, but we're coming back. But if you would, and I think Pastor Michelle wanted to go to these verses this morning. I'm not sure we got there. Proverbs 3. It essentially says the same thing. Proverbs 3, verse 9 and 10. It says, Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits." of all your increase, so, and if you do, in other words, your barns will be filled with plenty and your presses will burst, burst out with new wine. So, and then uh, go over to Matthew 6. Let's see what Matthew 6 says about it. And verse 38, but seek first the kingdom of God and, all, and his righteousness and all these things shall be given to you. And um, he, and before that, he's talking about you know where we we don't 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 bother don't worry, okay? Don't take any thought about what are we going to eat, what are we going to drink, what are we going to wear, because the Father, your heavenly Father, knows you have need of those things. So these three scriptures combined together just kind of tell me if we will just give to the Lord, it, it's almost a no-brainer. I mean, it, it's it's like almost a given. He's going to bless us. Amen? But let's carry it a little bit further. Let's look at what is it? And 633 says, again, this is Matthew 633, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you, right? Seek first the kingdom of God. So that, that's kind of our role, right? Our part, beyond our giving, our part is to seek first the kingdom of God. All right, now go to Luke 6. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Went to Jason's Deli today. Had to work it in somewhere. This is the Jason's Deli scripture. Give and it shall be, for those of you who don't understand, if you go to Jason's Deli and you get the ice cream cone, right? You just see how much ice cream you can load onto that cone, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, right? That's where that comes from. Give and it will be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Will men give unto you? And then it says, for with the measure you use, it will be measured unto you. Now, there's two questions that that 
scripture raises in my mind. Okay? It says, first of all, give and it will be given unto you. For with the measure you use, it will be measured unto you. What is it? What is the antecedent here of that word it for you English majors? We talked about this a little bit Wednesday night. What does it refer to? And if I work my way back, the closest thing I can suggest that it refers to is where it says in verse 35 of Luke 6, love your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return. Then your reward, your reward will be great and you will be the sons of the highest. And even before that, in verse 23, it refers to your reward being great in heaven. So give and it shall be given unto you means your reward will be given unto you. Amen? It's talking about your reward. Now, does our reward mean just financial abundance? Absolutely not. It's way more than just mere money. Right? All right, then this verse also suggests something else. The me with the measure you used, it will be measured unto you. Well, what's the measure? How, much it, how, how do we measure the measure that we use? Well, look at 2 Corinthians 9, 6, the other house scripture. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. There are two different measures of sowing. So with the measure we sow, it will be measured. So we're going to sow uh, bountifully or sparingly? I, I choose bountifully. How about you? And, and the Bible elsewhere, you know, it says, in fact, just in that same chapter in, in verse 12, it says, the gift is accepted according to what a man possesses and not according to what he does not possess. So sparingly and abundantly depends on what you possess. It's not compared to somebody else, right? Okay, so the, the same measure relates to the extent of our sowing. And then it says, let every man give according to the purposes of his heart, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. So our role, you know, in terms of what we do, we honor the Lord, we give unto the Lord, we seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, right? And here we give cheerfully, and then what? God is able to make all grace abound toward you so that you always, having enough of everything, may abound to every good work. So the reward that we're talking about this clearly indicates to me, we're talking about grace and enough of everything and every good work implies to me that the reward is way more than just uh, what we have need of, that the Father knows we need, or what, we, what are we going to eat, what are we going to wear, right? It's more than that. So our, our sowing may be in the, f when you give into the offering tonight, your sowing may be in the form of money, but remember, that's just a medium of exchange that we use in our economic system, okay? But it goes in to the kingdom of God, the, 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 the kingdom system, and the reward comes back as a kingdom reward. And that includes all of the financial needs that we have, and then way more. And then Matthew 6, back to Matthew, <clears throat> in verse 19 chapter 6 verse 19 says don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and thieves break in and steal but store up your treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal now we're not making uh, monetary deposits into heaven. God doesn't need our money, but we are making deposits in, in heaven when, when we, uh, according to 2 Corinthians 9, 8, and 10, we, uh, we have every grace, every good work. We have fruits of our righteousness. Back there in Malachi, it talked about um, uh, that we would have a blessing. We are blessed, 
Amen? So go back to Malachi. And this is the part that, that just kind of struck me this morning when Pastor was reading this. Because it's, here's, here's the reward. My, my Bible, the subtitle even says, the reward of the faithful over here are just above verse 16. Matthew, I mean Malachi 3.16. It says, Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another. Are we talking right now? Or can, can we talk? Let's talk to one another about this. Okay, do you fear the Lord? Amen. Then, uh, the way she read it this morning, those faith builders spoke to one another. Amen. <laughs> um, the Lord listened. He heard him. And then what, here's the reward. A book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord, have reverence for the Lord, have faith in God, and those who esteem his name. And then look at verse 17. They shall be mine. What greater reward can there be than that? They shall be mine, says the Lord, on the day when I make up my jewels. Okay, so you, each one of you is a gem. Praise God. Hallelujah. You're a, you're a jewel before him. And he says, I will spare them as a man spares his son who serves him. And then... You will again discern between the righteous, there's righteousness again, and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not. So there's our reward. There's our treasure stored up in heaven. And all of these blessings and all of this abundance comes in the form of things that we need, physical things that we need, but so much more. And it all starts with our giving. So let's, let's proceed to our giving tonight, if you will, and, and give unto the Lord. I want to do one last thing. If you would stand, and rather than uh, read all of the ten benefits of God's favor, I want to just look at that last paragraph. So if you'll repeat this after me. Thank you, Lord, Thank you, Lord. For, supplying for supplying all my financial needs that I may have more than enough, more than enough to, give to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about, folks. Bless you. Gentlemen, you want to serve the people. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. If you would please join me in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, I would like to continue something that we ministered on last Sunday, and um, it's one of those areas that you've got to lay deposits of it. You've got to come in and you've got to lay down some principles and chew on it for a while and come back. Ephesians chapter 6, we're going to uh, give our attention to verse 10. Ephesians 6.10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Strong in the Lord, being separated from the power of His might. We want to be strong in both in both areas, in both avenues of our walk with God. We want to be strong in our relationship with Him, in our connection to the life of God and the characteristics of God. And then we also want to be strong in the power of His might, which would represent the anointing and the flow of ministry gifts and operating for His glory. And a lot of times people get excited about the ministry gifts. They get excited about the gifts of the Spirit that we see in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 12. And they say, I want, to, I want that power. I want, the, I want to operate in that. And I want to, they'll, they'll give their attention to the power of His might without first laying a foundation or establishing their roots in being strong in the Lord. 
And of course, it is not a prerequisite for operating in any of the gifts to, to wait until you've been a number of years under the word. We see there were people in the book of Acts who, when the apostle Paul came and he asked them, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? And they didn't even know there was a receiving of the Holy Spirit. And so they had Jesus preach to them. They got baptized in Jesus' name. They got filled with the, the Holy Spirit and they began to prophesy. And just having received Jesus and establishing that uh, as their salvation, they, be, they immediately, so it's not a prerequisite, but for us to have longevity in ministry, Amen. for us to have longevity in life, it's important for us to establish. And I use the example of the story that Brother Hagen said to many of the people who were in, involved in the the days of what is referred to as the voice of healing days. Uh, that's a phrase that Brother Hagin used a lot to describe it. And he was talking about the healing wave that went through the United States of America back in the late 50s and early 60s. And he, he even mentioned that it was so easy for people to get healed, that it, it wasn't uh, just uh, the preaching. Sometimes they got healed in the, during the singing. Uh, it was uh, something that God was doing. But Brother Hagin began to minister to those people who were on the forefront of that move. And he said, if you don't get rooted in the word, I'm going to outlast you all. And, you know, he had healing in his ministry as well. Uh, but he, what he was telling them is it's not just the gifts. What you're seeing in that those tent meetings and in those healing me meetings was a, a, a gift of the spirit. It was operation of the anointing. It was, it was uh, the Holy Spirit at work. And what he was telling them was the word is what's going to keep you and the word is what's going to keep your ministry grounded. And that's why if you do any church history uh, to recognize during that era, there were some people that were so mightily used of God. Miracles, blind eyes open. I mean, creative miracles. Eyes created in their in 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 heads that didn't have eyes, in babies uh, def that were deformed, supernatural. And yet those same people didn't have longevity in ministry. And then sometimes it, it brings a mark because people say, well, look how great they were used. Look how, how mightily they were used. And how could that happen to them? How could they, they die the way they died? Or how could their ministry end up the way that it ended up? And, and the people who wonder don't recognize the difference between being strong in the Lord Amen. and being strong in the power of his might, that it's not one or the other that we're supposed to choose. It, it's not saying, well, I, I choose to be strong in the power of his might, but I don't want to take time to develop being strong in the Lord. No, we need both developed in our lives, and we've got nothing better to do with our lives than to be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. And so as we look at this, I want to read to you from the Passion Translation. It says, be supernaturally infused with strength through your life union with the Lord Jesus. I like that. It's talking about your born again spirit accessing the life of Jesus that is available because you are born again and living out of that flow. Jesus used the description of a vine and branches to describe the life we are to live. He said, I am the vine and you're the branches. And that is an indicator of where we are to get our strength. We are to depend upon the vine, the, the, the source for our ability in this life. That we are not to live anymore. I, I, I appreciate how... The Apostle Paul said in one place, he said, you are acting like mere unchanged men. And that's the Amplified Translation. He was talking about the fact that they were carnal. There was envying. There was strife. He said, I, I, would, I need to. I should be able to speak to you. You should be teachers. I should be able to speak to you as mature. But then he made that phrase. Uh, but I'm, I have to. Uh, he said, you are acting like mere unchanged men. 
Well, that indication to me says that I have been changed. I am not a mere human being. I am a, a life alive with the life of God. Like uh, Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20 says, I'm crucified, but nevertheless I live. <laughs> but it's not I that live, it's Christ who lives in me. I'm not living out of my personality. I'm not living out of my ability. I'm not living out of my natural human strength. I am living out of Christ in me, the life that is in me because of my union with him. And this is involved in walking in the word. It's involved in walking in love. All of these different phrases to say uh, how we behave ourselves or how we deal with things in our life walking in love, walking in the light, walking in the word, all of these things are actually indicators that we are living out of the spirit, being strong in the Lord, strong in our union with him, strong in our relationship with him. Galatians chapter 5 discusses the fruit of the spirit. And remember my definition for you, it is not just fruit because I don't want you thinking peaches, bananas, apples, and pears. I want you to be thinking about that which is produced in your spirit. Yes. Now, in the, in the King James Version, it is uh, capitalized. But if you um, recognize that word is the same when it's talking about your born-again spirit or the Holy Spirit, there's only one word in the Greek language, and so you have to, by the context, determine if it's talking about the Holy Spirit or your spirit. Now, my take on this is this. The Holy Spirit lives in my spirit anyway. So why make a, 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 a dividing line and say, well, this is talking about why not go ahead and include the idea, the Holy Spirit dwelling in my spirit Amen. is where this fruit is being produced Amen. because he lives in me, in my Amen. spirit. And so, uh, but another indicator that Brother Hagen gives is that uh, it is, he says, we know it's talking about the human, born again human spirit, not the human spirit that's not been born again, that's, that's death ruled, but the born again spirit because that fruit is on the branch. Mm -hmm. The fruit's not on the Holy Spirit. Amen. The fruit's on our spirit because we're the branch. And so that, that helps us to recognize, but still, the Holy Spirit lives in us if we're born again. Amen. And so let's not leave him out. <laughs> let's not leave him out of our concept of how this reads. So when we do read this, I want to go ahead and back up uh, to verse um, 16 because it begins here saying uh, a phrase that is talking about us living out of our spirit. It says, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust or the desires, the cravings of the flesh. And so the answer to dealing with our flesh is walking in the spirit. Not making a major ordeal of battling the flesh and giving attention to the flesh and, and always uh, uh, pointing out the flesh, but instead to point our attention to the spirit, walking in the spirit, walking out of our born again spirit who is indwelt with the Holy Spirit. For the flesh, verse 17, lusts against the spirit or craves or desires to go against what your spirit desires to do. And the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. Mm -hmm. Which reminds me of Romans chapter 7. Amen. Which says, the thing I don't want to do is what I ended up doing. And the thing I didn't want to do, the thing I did want to do is not what I ended up doing. Why? Because the I is the spirit. What I wanted to do was walk in the word, walk in love, walk in the spirit. And, and, and in Romans chapter 7, he's not telling us that we are destined to live that battle. <laughs> because he, he brings it to a conclusion. He says, who shall deliver me from this body of death? 
Thank you through Jesus Christ, I am delivered from the body of death or the flesh. I'm delivered. Why? Because I am no longer under the law of sin and death. But I am now in the law of the life of uh, the law of the life of in Christ Jesus, the life of the spirit in Christ Jesus. And so when we see this verse 17, when it says so that you cannot do the things that you would, that's only if you are giving both the flesh and your spirit the attention. But if you are are walking in the spirit then you're not in the position where you say, the thing I want to do, I don't end up doing. Instead, you'll be able to say, I am walking in the light. Praise God, I'm walking in the word. Praise God, I'm overcoming. Amen. But if you be led of the spirit, you're not under the law, verse 18. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Don't you love that word? Just say it three times lasciviousness, lasciviousness, lasciviousness. I love that word because we never use it, right? Have you been, did you get up this morning in your yoga pants and say, I feel lascivious today? (laughs) No, we don't use that word, but you know what it means is no restraint. No restraint to the mind, no restraint to the word, to the tongue, no restraint uh, to, to, to your flesh. Lasciviousness idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders. Don't look at that. You got murder right there in the same list with strife and envy. Mm -hmm. Drunkenness, revelings, and such like. So this is not just a a, a complete list. It, It leaves anything that's in that category to be added to that list. And such like, of the which I tell you before as I have told you in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God but the fruit of the spirit again that which is produced in the born again spirit which is indwelt with the Holy Spirit the fruit is love joy peace long-suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness and temperance against such there is no law And they that are Christ, or those that belong to Jesus Christ, have crucified the flesh. Whose job is that? We talked about that last week, didn't we? Who who puts off the old man? I I do. We do. We are the ones responsible to put off the old and to put on the new. Those that are Christ, again, our responsibility, we have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust or cravings. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Hallelujah. And then he goes back again, making it on down-to-earth instructions. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. And chapter 6 continues along that line, giving practical instruction for walking in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Living in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit. Keeping ourselves in that place where we are are, uh, in line with the word. Glory to God. Now, when we see these listed for us in verse 22, I want to give our attention tonight to the first three, love, joy, and peace, because uh, they have such, they're in this order by the Spirit's writing, the Holy Spirit, who is the author all, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. God breathed. So the Holy Spirit put in order specifically. And I would like to think that it's by order of importance. Uh, be, when we see love being the very first one listed, we know that's the most important because God is love. And uh, we give our emphasis to what he gives emphasis to. Amen. So let's go to 1 Corinthians and look at chapter 13 and let the scripture identify love for us because there must be, hear me church, there must be a redefining of love if you're going to walk in the love of God correctly. 
There must be a redefining of love, a renewing of our mind when we decide what love is because this world has been providing many erroneous definitions of love over the years. Identifying love as an emotion, identifying love as as all of the, you, you've got all kinds of songs, you know, hello, I love you, can you tell me your name? <laughs> love according to the world standards, the fleeting, uh, conditional, emotional love is not what we are to identify with or to submit to. God is love and we have to let the Bible define who he is in this aspect of love so that we will accurately hit the mark. And 1 Corinthians 13 is here because the Corinthian church was out of line. <laughs> if you read 1 Corinthians, they had a few things that the Apostle Paul had to bring correction to. And one of the things that he's bringing correction to, he said they had gifts. They had manifestations of the Holy Spirit and there was no order and there was no accuracy. Why? Because they weren't concerned about each other or edifying someone else. They were concerned about being heard and seen. They were concerned about, I want to give my word and I've got a prophecy and I've got a word of wisdom and I've got... And, and there had to be some order set into place and the main effort of order, the, the, main, the main thing he attacked or confronted about their being out of order was their motive. And, and you know, in chapter 11, he said that it was part of it, a, a, a part of why they were missing it where communion was concerned. He said, you're, you're setting people and making a, a difference between people who don't have the right kind of food to bring to communion. They weren't discerning the Lord's body in the sense of discerning brothers and sisters in Christ. And they were walking out of love. And then he brings it again here where the ministry gifts are concerned because in chapter 12 he talks all about the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the gift of... of uh, uh, tongues and interpretation of tongues, the working of miracles, uh, gifts of healings. He, begin, he talks about those and then he comes into chapter 13 and he says, but I want to show you a more excellent way. Yeah. I want to show you what's higher than giving a gift, uh, 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 operating in the gift of healing. I want to show you what's more important than giving a word of wisdom. I want to show you what's more important than having the, the prophecy, the, 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 the uh, interpretation of tongues. I want to show you what's more important. Mm -hmm. And he is establishing their motive for operating in the gifts. Why do you want to operate in the gifts? Why do you want to be strong in the power of his might? That's right. There are a lot of people in pulpits there are a lot of people in ministry because they find their identity in it. Not because they love the people, not because they, they care about the body of Christ, not because they care about seeing people discipled or growing. Hallelujah. That's why when our works go through the fire, what has the right motive is not going to be burned up. Our motive counts, our motive for everything we do, the motive for why we greet at the front door, the motive for why we run the camera, the motive for why we vacuum the floor is because we love God and we love His people. We love God and we love each other. That motive will always keep you on track. That will always keep you centered on the bullseye. You'll never miss it. Loving God and loving His people, loving each other. Hallelujah. And so... In chapter 13, in the light of this correction, he begins with, uh, uh, he said in verse 31 of chapter 12, covet earnestly the best gifts. That's correct. It's, it's desire earnestly the best gifts. And yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, 
I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. When I was a little girl, there was a television show called The Gong Show. Anybody ever seen The Gong Show? <laughs> it, was like, it was like the talent show, the uh, uh, yeah. talent show they have, and they buzz people if it was, you know, if, they're, if, the show, if the act is bad. You know, America's Got Talent, I think, is the name of it. If the act is bad, they buzz them, you know, and they give them a, well, The Gong Show, the, if, it was, if it was bad, they would go grab that big mallet and run to the gong, and it would gong. <laughs> he says in this verse that if I speak with tongues, the tongue of men and of angels, but I am not doing so with the motive of love, with the driving force of love, if I don't have love, I'm just a sounding gong. It's like, go get the mallet and hit the gong. That's awful. <laughs> yeah. Amen. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith. So now we have just identified some more of those supernatural activities in chapter 12. The gift of faith. The gift of prophecy. The word of knowledge. Supernatural. Even though I have this supernatural working in my life, if I don't have love, I am nothing. Faith that could move a mountain. But if I don't have love, I am nothing. He's redefining for us the importance. What is important is that we be governed by love. What is important is that we be strong in love. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profits me nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So love is the most important endeavor. Amen. It is the most important pursuit for us. And then he begins to define love in verse 4. Love suffers long. One translation says endures long and is kind while you're enduring. <laughs> not complaining, not, oh, I can't put up with this another moment. You're plucking my last nerve. No, love endures long and is kind in the enduring. Love vaunteth not itself is not puffed up. Hallelujah. Love does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinks no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But where there be prophecies, they will fail. Where there be tongues, they will cease. Where there be knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect or complete comes, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Love is the mark of maturity. Amen. A person can be in church for 25 years and not grow. Wow. Not mature in the things of God. They can attend the church and not be working the word and putting the word to work where love is concerned. And remember, we are in that place where love is being perfected as we walk in the word. First John uh, chapter 2, we read it last week, verses 3 and 5. It says that as we walk in the Word, the love of God is perfected in us. So none of us are at the stage of love that we can say, I am a love, I, I, am, I have reached the top level, I am maxed out in my love classes, I don't need to love any better than I love right now. I am a professional and, and uh, I know everything about walking in love, and so I can't learn anything else. No, <laughs> none of us are there. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But all of us are at different stages of growth. Amen. 
And we all want to make this area of our life an important uh, place of our attention that we are, are attending to how we deal with things, that we are attending to yielding to love. Romans chapter 5 verse 5 says that the love of God is shed abroad in our heart. The Weiss translation says that it is constantly being poured out and flooding our heart. We have access to abundant love at all times. Amen. The trick is, the key is, it must be yielded to. It's not automatic. Just because the love of God is in our heart doesn't mean you let the love be the directing force of your response. If you snap somebody's head off, you did not yield to that flood of love that's in your heart. Instead, that not you, that other person. They, if, they snap at their, if they snap at people, they're not yielding to the love that is available in the heart. They're yielding to what their flesh wants to do in that situation. Oh, no, you did not talk to me like that. They want to get the last word in. They want to, to, to protect themselves or, or defend themselves with their words. The love is available, but we choose to walk in it. We choose to access it. We choose to turn the other cheek. We choose to have a soft word that turns away the wrath. We choose to forgive. We choose. All of those are, are choices to yield to the love that's available. But the love is there. And this love is going to, uh, this is the answer to every marriage. If, if, if we... Yield to love, our marriages are affected Amen. by that love of God. Our, our interaction with our family, our interaction with our, our boss, our employers, our fellow employees, every aspect of our life will be affected by our love walk. Amen. Hallelujah. And you will never stand before God and say, my life was worse because I walked in love. <laughs> it won't happen. You'll never say, when I started walking in love, everything went south and my life fell apart. Amen. You're never going to say that. Amen. Instead, you'll be able to see, you know, I didn't feel like forgiving, but I did so because the love of God constrained me to forgive them. And look what the Lord has done. Amen. It will always cause your life to turn out better. Amen? Amen. And so love is important. And then... He says this, he says in verse 13, Now abides faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Now, we are a faith-building church. That's the assignment on this church. Our emphasis is on teaching principles of faith because that's what God called us to do. But faith works by love. We, we have to also have a strong uh, teaching, a strong um, foundation of love because you can have the greatest instruments, but if they need electricity to run, it's not going to profit. They won't function without it. And we can have the greatest faith. Like he said in verse 2, if you have enough faith so that you could remove mountains, if I don't have love, it's just unplugged. <laughs> it, it has no power supply to it. Amen. Love is the power supply to every area of our life and most importantly to our faith. Hallelujah. So in chapter 14, verse 1, he says, follow after love. Remember that previous verse, there wasn't a, a disconnect of chapters in the original. He says, the greatest of these is love, so follow after love. Amen. The greatest of these is love, so what's your assignment? Follow, follow. And this word is a word that would indicate the way a hunter tracks its prey. I mean, it, it, it is a word that indicates, have you ever seen those old westerns and, and they would have the Indian guide who would be able to get down and say there were three men on horses and one of the horses is lame and he could, he could read all of the, the different uh, uh, prints in the sand or whatever, what they're tracking. 
They're, they're hunting down. They, they, they got the posse out. They're going after the, they're hunting them down. And that's the word describing this word follow. Hunt, hunt it. Wow. I, mean, I mean, start tracking. Yeah. Start tracking. Oh, I need some signals. What would be the love response in this situation? What would be the thing that is going to put me in the flow of love? What is going to, I'm tracking it. I'm hunting it like a hunter is, is hunting it, the, the, the prey. Follow after love. Uh, the one translation says, be constantly pursuing and earnestly endeavoring to acquire. Be constantly pursuing love. Brother Kenneth Copeland, he said, the greatest thing you can learn is learn to love. Hallelujah. Brother Hagin said, everything that God did, he did by faith, but he did it because of love. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be constantly pursuing and earnestly endeavoring to acquire God's love in every situation. It says, follow after love. And desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. Why? He goes on to explain why prophesying is, uh, is important because it edifies the church. It edifies. He, he said desire that because it's going to bring strength to others. Why? That's a love motive. Amen. That's a love motive that I want to do this because it's going to help other people. I want to strengthen the, uh, the others. And that love motive will always keep us on track. Hallelujah. The Message Bible of verse 1 says, Go after a life of love as if your life depended on it, because it does. <laughs> Go after a life of love as if your life depended on it, because it does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So love then needs to be at the forefront of our endeavors, the forefront of our, uh, uh, what we're reaching for, what we are desiring in our life. And uh, I was working on some, um, a transcript for Sister Jeannie, and in it she was telling her testimony. It's my favorite CD of hers. It's called um, My Supernatural Encounters with God. And in it, I told her it's really a story about how God uh, led you to love, to, to receive the love of the Father because she had lost her natural father and someone had told her that it was God who took him. And so uh, even at, for a long time she ran, she just didn't want anything to do with God. And then when she did receive Jesus as Lord, she still wasn't open to God as her father in that. And so if these encounters that she had with him helped her to open up and to receive the love of God. And during one of them, she said, I began to pray, Lord, help me to receive your love. I'd never heard anybody explain it that way, but someone had witnessed it to her said just uh, I think she had heard someone else telling their testimony and they said, uh, you can just pray and ask God to help you to receive his love. And she began to do that. And because of that prayer, she received the love of God in such a way that she said, I had such a desire to go on to heaven to be with him, I had to pull back from it. Wow. But what was happening was that she was becoming so aware of the love of God. Amen. And here's, here's a, a help for you. Here's a help. Instead of putting all the pressure on you to be perfect in how you walk in love, ask God to help you receive his love and then love other people with it. Amen. Then, then you take the pressure off your ability to do it right. Because none of us in our natural ability can do it right. But if we're living from the vine, if we're living out of the life we're receiving from Jesus, then the love of God is coming to me. You remember the story I told you about uh, Corey Ten Boom, who was a survivor of the Holocaust, and she had, been, uh, and, uh, she had lost her entire family, 
in the concentration camp. She was the only person in her family that did not come, that, that, that did not die in the concentration camp. And her sister, she watched a certain guard torment and abuse her sister. And her sister died not because he, per, he personally murdered her, but he was one that tortured and, and caused such a hardship on her. And she did eventually die because of that hardship. And years after the, the war was over, she was telling her testimony, I believe it was in Holland, and that guard came up to her after she told her testimony and preached. And he said, she evidently had taught about the love of God. He said, I'm so glad for the love of God. And, and he put out his hand and said, uh, I've received, I think he said, I've received Jesus. And, and I'm so glad that I'm walking in the love of God. And, and he was waiting for her to put her hand out. And she said, everything in me said, oh my, I can't forgive him for what he did to my family. I cannot forgive him for the way he mistreated and abused and, and, and tormented my sister. I cannot forgive him in myself. But she said to herself, she prayed in this moment while the man is standing there waiting for her to take his hand. She said, Lord, if you will help me, I will love him with your love and forgive him. And she had, she had to yield to that flood of love that was available. And she put her hand out and she said the moment she put her hand in his, the love of God flooded. It, it, she, she, it was manifest to her. And she was able to let it all go. Amen. Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. God. That's why I encourage you to pray. Since this is something we should be following after, constantly endeavoring, pursuing. Yes. We need to ask God, Lord, let your love so flow in me that I can easily love other people with your love. Asking, opening that conversation and inviting his love that we know is already available in our hearts, but helping us to receive it so that we can be distributors of that love in our life. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's take a look here at Nehemiah chapter 8. I want to touch on a few things about joy. I want to look at Nehemiah 8, and I know it's one that's familiar to us. It's something that if you've uh, studied on this subject at all, I know you've heard it. But um, it's still important. Even though we've heard them many times, we need to uh, feed on these truths again. And Nehemiah 8.10 says, Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. They were crying. They were sorrowful because of what they heard as the scriptures were read. How far they'd missed it, evidently. Uh, things that, how far off they were from God's word. They were sorrowful and he said, don't be sorrowful. Don't be sorrowful. This is the time to celebrate. This is the time to rejoice. When it's referring to uh, eating the fat, drinking the sweet, sending the portions to them. He's talking about preparing a celebration. Amen. Talking about this is a, a time for feasting and celebration. And, and rejoicing because the joy of the Lord is your strength. They needed strength for the task ahead. They needed to be strong, to walk in the plan and the purpose of God that he had for them. And he gave them the key to strength. He gave them the key to being spiritually strong. He said, joy will make you strong. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. The um, uh, expanded Bible says, don't be sad, grieve, or mourn because the joy of the Lord will make you strong. The joy of the Lord will make you strong. Hallelujah. Now joy, again, is not an emotion. We do not have the same definition for joy 
that the world has. The world has ta takes joy and puts it in the same category with happiness. But happiness is based on what happens. It comes from a Latin word, hap, uh, the root word of that, it, and it's talking about the situation, the circumstance, what occurs that it invokes that joy or invokes that feeling. But joy is not a feeling. Love is not a feeling. We're talking about walking in spiritual forces here. We're talking about walking in spiritual flows. We're talking about the, the flow of the kingdom, which is righteousness, joy, and peace. We're talking about living from our spirit, living out of the inner man, living out of the real you, the you in Christ, the you that's been born again, the you that's a container of the life of God, the glory of God. In this earthen vessel, that, that part of you that is alive unto God, born of God, yes, living from that you, living from that, that uh, uh, inner man, the hidden man the Bible refers to. Living from our spirit requires us to have love as the governing flow of every action and requires us to have a fullness of joy to maintain our strength. Hallelujah. When we first came to the church in, in Kansas, we've been there, um, uh, just celebrated 20 years last year, uh, and this will be 21, uh, this December. And uh, when we first came there, uh, for one thing, there my husband started preaching about patience, and they said, oh, honey, we can't pray for patience. Don't pray for patience. Don't pray for patience. Because God will put all kinds of terrible things in your life to teach you patience. A chapter and verse for that. Where is that? Don't pray for patience. We just saw long suffering in our list. That's a, a, a defined patience. Hallelujah. I don't, and I don't have to pray for it. It's a, available in my spirit. I have to yield to it. Hallelujah. But another thing that we noticed is and it was a full gospel church before we came and brought the vision of faith builders to it. Um, and and uh, there, was whenever, there was a group that whenever the Spirit of God began to move, they responded with sorrow. They responded in a way that was all... And, and there are times that I have wept before the Lord. There are times that... He has moved in a way that was a, a repenting maybe or a cleansing. But to always only respond to the moving of the Spirit with oh, oh, painful sounds. Can I get a witness in the house? Y'all know what I'm talking about. And if there was a laughter, if there was a joyful sound, it was something that they, it was foreign to them. But the Word of God describes joyful sounds. It says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Come before His presence with singing. Serve the Lord with gladness. So, the emphasis of the Bible is joy, rejoicing. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Gladness. Why? He has made me glad. Amen. He has done great things for me. That's not going to make me sad. That's right. What Jesus has done doesn't make me sad. Amen. And again, I remember whenever they would talk about communion or talk about the cross or talk about the blood, it was... And I thought, this is the greatest thing that ever happened in my life. When Jesus shed his blood, I got set free. When Jesus gave his life, I became a new creature in Christ. Why are you sad? This is, this is, I, I, I communion always makes me smile. Communion always makes me full of joy. Why? Because it's victory. It's not loss. To talk about the cross is not loss. To talk about what Jesus did on the cross, he doesn't want us having a sense of loss and, and, and sorrow over what he endured. He wants us to say thank you. He wants us to have gratitude as our response, joyfulness. And so he's telling them, 
Do not respond with sorrow. Notice that was the initial response. And our flesh, the carnal, the carnal does yield to that easier. Your spirit always enjoys rejoicing. Your flesh might say, I don't feel like raising my hand today. They want me to get my praise on. I'm, I don't want to lift my voice. Well, listen, your spirit always wants to give God glory. It is never your born-again spirit that hits the snooze button and says, I don't want to pray right now. Do you see me smiling? It's not your spirit that is, is, is desiring that. The flesh craves. Did I hit your toes right there? I heard that. He's like, oh, it's like in my toes. It's the flesh. And you see why it's a choice, a yielding? Yeah. Do you see the choice? So when he says, don't yield to the sorrow, it might be there. It might be presenting itself as a way for you to respond, but you don't have to yield to it. Amen. You don't have to yield to it. You can choose to yield to the joy. Hallelujah. And you choose because the joy, which is not happiness, it's not an emotion, it's not a feeling. You can be joyful with tears going down your face. You can be joyful. The tears won't stay long if you will keep uh, hitting that, that pump of, of joy if you keep rejoicing those tears will subside and you will you will begin to experience in your emotions the results of that joy when it becomes full but it, you can choose to joy when there's no feeling in it Amen. you can choose to respond in joy when there's no emotional evidence that it's there don't check your emotions to find out if you're joyful because they are poor indicators of joy. Amen. You've got to just, you've got to know, I am born again. Joy is mine. Joy is mine. I have joy. I'm going to yield to it right now. And I'm going to rejoice. So it says the joy is your strength. Now let me show you one of the important reasons. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 14. We're talking about being strong in the Lord. And so to be strong in the Lord, we've got to yield to these flows. I don't want you to try to be strong in the Lord in your natural self. I want you to be strong in the Lord in the born again flows and provisions of strength that are in your spirit. Amen. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 14 says the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. The Amplified, if you'll put that on the screen for us, gives us a little bit of uh, greater clarity. The strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pain or trouble. The strong spirit of a man sustains him. If something attacks you, if something comes against you, your spirit being strong will help you maintain the course and overcome that attack. Amen. The strong spirit of a man sustains him. So would it be important for us to remain strong spiritually? Amen. A weak and broken spirit, who can raise up or bear? So it's possible, even though we are all born again and have access to love, joy, peace, long-suffering, te temperance, meekness, all of the flows, the attributes, the characteristics of God, it's possible to yield to the flesh and not feed your spirit. And then that person will become weak in their spirit and not have the same strength. And that's why we've got to develop disciplines. Amen. You know, uh, over this last uh, couple of weeks, we've had a lot of things in our schedule that were uh, uh, taking away from my normal routines. 
and praise God for a, a supply during that time. But uh, I still had to look for different times just because I don't have the same hour that I, uh, same time or same specific hour of the day that I, available that I would normally give to, to studying on this. Or, why? Because I need my face in this word. Amen. I need this word in my heart. I need it going in my ears. I need it going into my heart. I need the word going in. Why? Because I, I have a flow to maintain. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. And the, the disciplines will help us during those seasons that there are a lot of uh, interruptions to the normal schedule. Amen. But our focus has Amen. to be, I've got to keep my spirit strong. Mm -hmm. I've, got to, I've got to do what is necessary. And the spirit cannot be strong without a steady flow of the word. The, the word is food to our spirit, man. Just like natural food gives nourishment and strength to your physical body, this is the food your spirit needs to remain strong, to keep a strong spiritual immune system. Amen. Hallelujah. And it also affects our physical bodies. He says, the strong spirit of a man will sustain him in a time of bodily trouble. Hallelujah. The word is medicine to all of our flesh. Amen. The expanded Bible says, the human spirit can get you through sickness, but no one can live with a broken spirit. The, the, the human spirit, and we're talking about the strong spirit, can get you through sickness. Hallelujah. So this gives us an indication, not just for the physical effect of, of our health, but for every aspect of our life. You can deal with any difficulty if you have a, a fullness. You can deal with it much easier when you're strong than just suffering through and tying the knot at the end of the rope and trying to hang on. Amen? Amen. And lastly, let's talk about peace as we conclude here. And I want to look at the words of Jesus in John chapter 14 and verse 27. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your peace. Thank you, Lord, for your joy, which is our strength. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. Would you just lift your hands and worship him for a moment? We worship you, Lord. We give you praise. We thank you, Lord, for your your provisions to make us more than conquerors, your provision of victory. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Keso ste mala isente ama le noma ishtebe kolo esetive aba olo esente nemi ama ese ahai. Hale in the andaba o koshen te amba ese antene me ahai. Alla kese tabori amba hai. Ediate a sein to no maya kushte amba hai. And there are many distractions and there are many, uh, many attempts at your focus. And I desire to have your attention and I desire to give you the answer to every situation and every circumstance. And yet it requires your focus. It requires your focus on spiritual things. And it will require your focus on kingdom matters. It will require the principles of my word and the principles of my systems, my kingdom, my kingdom uh, ways to be established in your heart. Guard your attention. Guard your attention. Guard your attention. Hey, so tabashta bahaya, let us see to bahaya. Medi ambako somba ketetia mahai. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Ho shen tentebele te se to the bako kola baha. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amanda, I want to pray for you, honey. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to pray for your steps. Steps that are ordered by the Lord. Steps that are ordered by the Lord. Steps that are ordered by the Lord. Hallelujah. There are things that God has deposited in you. There are things that God has prepared in you. There are, are truths that He has established in you. And you see things differently than a lot of people your age see. You see things differently than a lot of your friends see. Because you're seeing through the light of God's Word. And you're seeing through the plan that He has for your life. And I call you kept. I declare you are kept by God. Kept for His purpose and for His plan. Kept in His steps. Hallelujah. And I'm going to pray for wisdom. Because the choices and the decisions that you make will position you in God's plan without difficulty if you'll make them in the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. I want you to receive this right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your wisdom to be manifest over Amanda's life, that she would walk in the light of your word in even a greater way than she has up until this point. Father, that there would be a recognition in her heart about the importance and the weight of her decisions. <laughs> Wisdom beyond her years. Wisdom beyond her years. Wisdom beyond her years. Era umu siti miyahai. Mele iseta mani amahai. The plan that God has for you is a well provided for plan. And your wisdom will include wisdom for money. You won't be foolish where your money is concerned. You'll be wise. Hallelujah. I want to pray for a fresh and feeling. Lift your hands and just let the Holy Spirit minister to you. Fresh. You've received, but you haven't always yielded to Him in the way of letting Him minister through you, speaking in tongues. And this is the key to your wisdom. Hallelujah. 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 Will you yield to him? You don't have to do it right here if you're embarrassed. But when you're in your time alone talking to him, just go ahead and speak out what the Spirit gives you. Yield. Because he wants to pray some things that your head can't, your head can't wrap around. He'll pray the perfect will of God for us as we yield to him. In the name of Jesus. I love you. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to pray for you too. Hallelujah. 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 Ke asotomba ka ishen tomono e se lari in this noma e kishta manama koso dabaraba koso tomanama hai. Ola mene kandita murikisa neli amanesh tomba hai. Lady asantene amanama hai. Dobaraki se te de amba hai. Oro esentene mea hai. Moro bakashtam bahai, lava sentini amoko sabahai. Your plan, Father, your plan for her life unfolding before her. Your plan, Father, being made known. Details just dropping into her spirit. Details 
details, Father, directions, directions that you've already been preparing her for. Hallelujah. 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 There are some things that you have seen you are capable of. And it was a, a welcome surprise to you. You've seen you yourself being able to accomplish some things that maybe, maybe even some other people can't accomplish. Some things that came easy to you that were hard for some others. Hallelujah. That's God working in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are desires that you have to do certain things. And I know this in the natural, some things with numbers. There, those, those desires are keys to the direction that you can take. Indicators of something that God has for you. Hallelujah. Never say you can't do it. Never limit yourself because greater is he who is in you. And even if at the moment you don't know how, you still can through him. Hallelujah. You can do all things through Christ, which strengthens you. Hallelujah. And, and those things will come easy to you. Just like those math, those numbers, they came easy to you. Those things that may, other people may say, I could never do that. You say, I can do all things. And they'll come easy to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hala Mose Tebea Kushton Barabahaya, Mary Abacoso, Maria Dainteneya High, Lady Amboroko Se Tabakiash Damahai. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship 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 you, Lord. Kere Abacos then de Leada Bahai. Ke alabara ma kasandi arabahai, O aneme anama koste di arabahai, Lady arabara ba koso de, ne andu di stavra ba koso di ambole asiti di arabahai, Ala le ala la vande aname, Ala le ala vare ba ko, Lari ascende andani nemono se. Ala le ala la vetende ama ko ke chiti ande ande sando ma ko na ne ama hai le ala la ve kanda ande anda ma ko senti tini nanda le ande mo ko shende atamba ko seti araba hai Janessa, will you stand out in the aisle for just a moment? Hala vo ko seta ma hai. I need to impart of the anointing that is upon my life. There's something that you need, and I'm going to release it in the name of Jesus. blessing of the Lord is the, is the governing force, the blessing of the Lord, the blessing of the Lord, the blessing of the Lord repositions you in that circumstance, the blessing of the Lord 
fortifies and strengthens and puts you over. Puts you over. I call these hands blessed. I blessed in the name of Jesus. Blessed is the work of these hands. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Sister Evelyn, I just want to pray healing over your body. Hallelujah. good to us, Lord. You're so good to us, Lord. You're so good to us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name. Praise your name. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Praise the Lord. He's so good to us. He's so good to us. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. The joy of the Lord. It is our strength. Praise the Lord. We'll talk about peace on another day. Praise God. I love the Holy Spirit's leadings. It's never an interruption because he's in charge. So however he wants to move, if he wants to turn the whole direction of the service, we'll follow him. Amen. Because we don't want to do it without him ever. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Well, Father, I pray over our church family today, those who are still traveling and on the road and returning from their time with their families, Father, that they are kept and protected on their travels and, and let the blessing be in the fullest measure in the lives of every faith builder. And we thank you, Lord, for your goodness and for your mercy upon our lives. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Well, I believe you've received tonight. Amen. Let's stand to our feet as we prepare to dismiss. <clears throat> Pastor Steele will be back with us on Wednesday. So uh, he's looking forward to seeing every, everybody's face. We're back on track to be on every other weekend now that we've had our schedules readjusted a few different times. And so uh, he feels like he's been gone a long time. So he's glad to get, looking forward to getting to see everybody again. So praise God. The vision of this church is to build people's faith and to frame their world by the word of God. You and I will always be world changers. God bless you.